Hello and welcome to another computing video. Uh, this is another video in my little series introducing JavaScript ECMA Script 5 uh, relatively quickly to people who might already know one or two programming languages before. Uh, now in this video I want to start off by talking about how the fact that ECMA Script 5 has six what it calls language types. So these are the types um, for, for values that are directly manipulated by the programmer. Uh, there's also something called specification types, but let's just talk about these six language types for the moment. So it's got a type called undefined that has exactly one value, which is called undefined. And so any variable, you just go var a and you've not assigned it to anything. It has the value undefined. It's got the type undefined. Um, there's a type called null. Uh, so in Java, you might be used to the idea of a reference to a, an object that is null, uh, you know, a null reference to an object. And later on, you might assign a reference, uh, assign that reference to point to an actual object. Uh, but so the null reference, well, there is a null type in JavaScript and it's got exactly one value, which is null. Uh, now you'll notice that these two, therefore, are different types. Uh, there's undefined and there's null and there's a value undefined of type undefined and there's a value null of type null. And if we pop across into our REPL, we'll find that if I go undefined, is that double equals to null? So remember this can do type conversions and it will say yes it is. Uh, but if I do triple equals, is something that's not defined null? Triple equals no. Something that's not defined uh, is not null. It's got a different type. Uh, so if I was to go var a and I was to say a triple equals null, uh, no, it, it's it, a is undefined. It's not null. Uh, whereas if I was to go a triple equals undefined, I would get true. Yes, a is undefined. Uh, okay, it's then got Boolean types, and these have true and false as, va as values. And we've seen that when you convert them to numbers, they tend to come up as one and zero. Uh, it's got strings, which are always sequences of UTF-16 characters, and it's got a number type. And this is always a double precision floating point number. And so you'll notice here that JavaScript doesn't have separate types for integers and doubles uh, or integers and floating point numbers. Everything is a double precision floating point number. Um, for efficiency's sake in the background, uh, JavaScript virtual machines will often try and keep track of what's an integer as long as it can. But so far as the language is concerned, a number is a number and it's a double precision floating point number. And it's got object. And so an object in JavaScript is a collection of properties, effectively a collection of key value pairs. Uh, it's not too dissimilar from what in, in Java you might consider a hash map uh, or, or a hash. Uh, so these are the six types that JavaScript has, or at least the six language types that it's got. Um, Let's talk a little bit about objects uh, before we come back to those types. So objects are hashes or maps. And so we can declare an object by using curly braces, curly braces and setting its keys to values using our key, colon, and then what the value is. And so let us copy my obj into our REPL and run that. And so it's happy. And a here is one. So if I was to use square brackets to extract the the, uh, the value for the key, the string one, I should find uh, that. Oops, sorry, not a. My obj, of course. Sorry, the variable was called my obj. I've just uh, been a little bit domestically blind and typed a, which is uh, is there. In fact, this should be my obj of the key the string a because that's what I've defined that as here. Uh, so let's run that and I get one. Uh, if I put in one, well, sorry, one is a value. It's not a key. And so this is going to give me undefined. I haven't set uh, what my obj with the key the string one is. Uh, there is no value corresponding to that key. I've only got the value the string one corresponding to the key a. Uh, and so I can access that by going my obj square brackets and giving it the key a as a string. Uh, but I could also go my obj dot a and treat that as a property name. And so that will still give me the value, the string one that I stored against a in my hash. Um, OK, so we can access fields using a dot my obj dot a string one. 
uh, all using square brackets my obj square bracket string a and it, there, there's the key and it still gets out one uh, like hashes and maps they can be given new keys so I can set uh, there is my obj and I've set for the key a the value one and for the key b this the string two uh, but I could then say and my obj of and the key the string hello and you're on it uh, and the value I want to give it is three and so you'll notice that I've used the square bracket notation when I set that one so my obj key hello is three and uh, let's run that just so that it's happy and now let's go my obj and retrieve the key uh, the value for the for the key hello and it's three uh, but I could also refer to that as a property name and say my obj dot hello and it will still give me three uh, now the value one of the values anyway of the square bracket notation is that I can give it a key that's got spaces in it so over here I would not really be able to say my obj dot hello with spaces in it because well you can see already from the syntax highlighting um, that in fact uh, that space has made it think that is a different keyword but if I go my obj and the key is hello with spaces in it uh, equals and let's give it five to give it a different number uh, and then I go my obj of hello with spaces in it and I should retrieve my five and there it is uh, so that lets me put in uh, keys that have spaces if I use the square bracket notation um, and uh, so this one here is showing that I can in fact do this inside the notation where I set up the object so uh, previously I'd got a just as a property name followed by a colon but if I wanted to have spaces in that uh, well once again I could put uh, I could put my key name in quotes and then the colon and three and now if I run that I should get my uh, three oh I call it my obj two let me just delete that so it is my obj uh, so I get my obj hello with spaces in it and I get my three back out and so this format up here um, JavaScript object notation we'll talk a bit more about later on JavaScript object notation JSON JSON uh, is a format that is actually commonly used as a data interchange format uh, in a lot of API's these days but it comes from the syntax for, for the notation for declaring an object uh, in JavaScript okay uh, let's keep going now um, I mentioned earlier that we've got these six particular types um, that we've got undefined we've got null we've got number we've got booleans uh, and we've got uh, arrays and we've got strings uh, sorry we've got objects and we've got strings so I haven't mentioned arrays as being a language type but JavaScript does have arrays and uh, so here I can declare an array uh, array one two three four all right there it is and I can say all right give me array of zero arrays are zero index and it gives me one uh, and uh, because it's weakly typed I can also give it array of quote zero uh, and it will still give me one um, but array okay which of those language types is it and the answer is that arrays the language type of this is object and so that has a curious side effect that I could say instead of array of zero I could say array of um, this is not a number is 77 and I can run that and it's pretty happy and if I was to fetch that out this is not a number here it would give me back my 77 uh, so although I created an array here it's still an object which means that I can set uh, values for non uh, non number keys as well uh, okay so that's just kind of interesting and so well let's just copy the one from the slide and let's see what that does so array is one two three four array of text is 99 console.log uh, print out what array uh, dot text is and so here I'm using the property notation uh, to access it and it should print out 99 and lo and behold it does there's my 99 okay so 
a puzzler for you. Uh, pause the video and have a think about this one. Uh, so if the only six language types here are undefined null, boolean, string, number, and object, uh, which of those types is f here? I've declared a variable f and I've assigned it to a function. Unpausing the video and let's have a look at this one because this is kind of interesting. Well, I think it is interesting. So uh, var f is a function uh, taking a parameter a uh, that is going to return a plus 2. Uh, OK, and let's just check that a works. Uh, f of 5, run that, is 7. OK, I have my function uh, that takes a parameter a and returns a plus 2. If I was to say type of f, it will actually give me function. It knows it's a function. Um, but it's not one of those six basic language types. And the, the short answer is um, that it's an object. If you type type of f, it will say function. But functions are a special kind of object in JavaScript. And this means we can assign properties to a function. Uh, so up here, I have declared f. I could say f dot uh, my special property. equals 5 and I could run that and it's perfectly happy and I could still run f of 77 and get it to add 2 to it it is still a function but it is also an object that means that I can do things like look up what is the value of f dot my special property and get 5 back and so if we pop back over to the slide and do the example here. Uh, this is a little bit of a more intricate one. Sorry, I was being a little recursive here. So what I have said is I have declared actually just using the ordinary notation that says function, let's call it echo. Uh, it takes a parameter s, console.lock s. And let's first of all just show that that echo works. Echo, let's just say boo and make sure it echoes out to the log. Yes, there it is. And then we are going to say echo and we're going to set the property hello on it to be the string hello. And then I'm going to call echo the function with the property echo.hello. And so echo.hello is hello. Calling the function echo should take it in and print it out to this should print hello. And it does. So this is a curiosity that in JavaScript, functions are objects and we can set properties on them. Um, now, this might sound uh, kind of esoteric, but in fact, later on, uh, some web frameworks have been known to take advantage of this. Uh, so Angular JS, uh, version one of Angular in particular, uh, took advantage of the fact that you can assign properties uh, onto function objects. Uh, in terms of, um, well, we, we'll see what it used it for uh, when we cover Angular.js. But uh, Angular.js is one of the ones that took advantage of the fact that you can set properties on functions. Uh, now, I'd like to show you while we're talking about functions, uh, something uh, particular about JavaScript scoping system. So the scope of variables, variables in ECMA script 5 have one of two sc scopes. They can be global or they can be function scoped. And so anything declared outside a function is global. So if I just take var, this is global. OK, that is global scope. And so if I say function do it, and I say that this should console.log of this is global, and then I call do it, that should console.log my 5 because this here should be referring to this global variable and I run it and there we go it logged out my 5 that's there's a global variable for you anything declared inside a function is local to that function and so let us take this example here and let's say that f is a function that takes a parameter x and it is going to uh, declare a variable this is local x times uh, equals x times 2 uh, but then outside of that function I'm just going to refer to this is local so let's first of all check that the function works 
and I've got a syntax error which I think I have a sneaking suspicion that this is uh, from some of the copy paste uh, so oh there it is it is a typo that should say var I've typed val because I program in Scala a lot many apologies that should type say var I'll have to fix that in the slide um, so var f is that function I'm going to call f times 2 uh, f of 2 and uh, okay it's un result it's undefined because it's not actually returned it let's tell it to return this is local uh, so that's the return keyword, which I'm not sure if I've shown you uh, before yet. Uh, and so now four is what comes back. OK, we've called it. Can we refer to this is local outside the script? Well, if we run that, we get a reference error. This is local is not defined at line 10, character one. This one here. Sorry, you can't refer to that locally scoped variable that is, you know, f function scoped. Uh, inside that function you can't refer to that globally um, now something to notice though uh, and this is a little bit of a difference between uh, JavaScript ES5 and most languages uh, is that strictly speaking JavaScript ES5 doesn't have a block scope uh, and so let us show you what I mean using this example var can be function scope or it can be global scope uh, it can't just be block scope. Uh, let's copy this across into my REPL. And so what I've done here, I have declared a global variable called even, and I've said it's false. I've now declared a function uh, that takes parameter x, and inside this function I say if x is even, if x mod 2 equals equals 0, then I'm going to say var, so I've declared a var inside the function, even is true. So this even here should be functions, function scoped. So this even here equals true should not affect that even there. But the question I've got for you is what does this even down here refer to? In most languages, uh, or at least many of the familiar ones uh, such as Java, um, that scope of that variable would just be for that block. And so this here would refer back to the global uh, even is false. And so, but let, let's find out what happens in JavaScript. Let's, let's uh, console.log of f of 2 and let us run it and we get true. Uh, but if we console.log of f of 3, and so this is an odd one that's not going to go through this path. So you can kind of understand, OK, it went through that path and it said var even is true and it's returned it. OK, uh, but we'll notice something about that in a moment. Uh, but f is 3 and we have never gone through this path that declares the variable. What even does this refer to? Uh, well, let's run it. And this second log has produced undefined. And the reason it's produced undefined is because JavaScript has no block scope. Uh, it has no scope for var anyway uh, that only has uh, that as its scope. Instead, this is a var. It is function scoped. And so it is in scope all the way through the function. So even though I've not taken the path that declares it, it is still in scope. And this even here is referring to this even, but because x was not uh, even and that didn't execute, it didn't get assigned to 2 and so it is undefined. Uh, so that is a little bit of an unexpected behaviour, if you like, from the fact that uh, JavaScript uh, vars don't have a block scope, they only have a function scope uh, or a global scope. Uh, now, however, because that is one of these strange behaviours that can tie programmers in knots, uh, ES6, uh, the next version of JavaScript, introduces a new keyword called let, which does let you define keywords for variables with block scope. And even though that's defined in ETMA script 6, actually most of the browsers, and let's go and have a look, uh, they have implemented it uh, anyway in ETMA script 5. Um, so if we pop to can I use and this shows what the status is of various different features across different browsers and this is for the let keyword declares a variable with block level scope and we can see that edge yes 
Firefox, yes. Chrome, yes. Safari, yes. iOS, Safari, yes. Chrome for Android, etc. Uh, most of the what they call the evergreen browsers, the ones that keep updating themselves, support it. Opera Mini doesn't. Um, that's from 2015. Uh, Internet Explorer 11, but that's you know going way back to 2013. Uh, it's got some quirks with it. Um, but generally speaking, most of the the evergreen browsers, the modern browsers, uh, ES6 let works, uh, even though generally speaking, they only support up to uh, ETMA script five. Uh, now let us show you what happens when we change this to let's. So let's copy this version out and paste it across. And so now what I have said uh, is I have declared still a global variable up here. Uh, because that's not inside a block, it, it, it's, it's global, uh, even is false. I've declared let f, again globally, um, be a function that takes a variable x, uh, an argument x, sorry, and I've said if x mod 2 is 0, and here I've said let even equals true. And so this even here, it has block scope, it is only in scope between these curly braces. And so now this even here should very clearly refer to this one up here. It should be false. And so let us now try console.log of, and let's do f of three, the odd one first, and we run it and we see it says false. We didn't take this pass. Even, even is false has been returned. Uh, correct. Okay. Now let's also notice the other thing though, which is if we change this to two, <coughs> pause the video for a moment. What do you think it's going to produce? Run the video again and let's try it out. And this produces false. So the thing is, even if we go through this particular path and we said, well, we declared a variable in block level scope and it's true, it's only in scope for this block. And so here, we're not in that block. That variable is not in scope. This even here unambiguously refers to this global even that we declared up here and was false and that we have never modified because we only modified a variable that had block level scope. And so that correctly again produces false. Uh, but so this is block level scope, which is uh, something you might be used to from uh, from other languages and can behave a little bit more as you might be used to from those languages. OK, and I'm going to stop this video there and I'm going to talk about how we do modularity in JavaScript uh, in the next one.